Dr. Ruth Anderson on the International Angels Network. Today is Thursday, June 21, 2018. I'm your host, Ruth Anderson, and I'm coming to you live from Colorado. I'm an author and a spiritual counselor providing individualized transformational experiences for my clients using Holy Fire Reiki energy work in connection with the spiritual divinity, including Divine Mother, Archangels Michael, Gabrielle, and Raphael. Here at International Angels Network, we explore spirituality, angels, spirit guides, our loved ones on the other side, and much more. Our radio podcasts are available to you on Pocket Cast, Pinterest, Player FM, CastBox, Podtail, Podchaser, and Stitcher. These are all easy sites to use and make it simple to listen to our archive shows. Tonight is the third week of our five-week mini-series with guest Linda Dirks. Linda will be leading us in our learning about self-esteem, energy, and spirituality, and how together they can propel us into stepping into our authentic power. Linda is both inspirational and motivating. This episode of the International Angels Network is sponsored by Holistic Light Rejuvenation Center. For more information, visit HolisticRejuvenate.com. Sunday Sturgeon is the founder and CEO of Holistic Light Rejuvenation Center and is a host on our network. We're pleased to announce that International Angels Network is now also sponsored by Audible by Amazon. If you go to www.audibletrial.com backslash International Angels Network, you can get a free audiobook. So please check that out today. I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to listen in. This show is called Walking with Spirit. Walking with Spirit means consciously living in the physical realm with frequent connection to the divinity in the spirit realm and being open to all that they want me to experience. Every day I check in with my guides, Divine Mother, and God, sometimes seeking guidance, sometimes seeking connection, and sometimes seeking their healing abilities. Many days I receive lessons by hearing, seeing, or feeling signs coming in from the energetic realm. I never know what my day is going to look like or what the next learning might be. Each week, I share a story about an experience I had while walking with spirit. My story for this week happened just this morning. I drove over to visit my mother at her assisted living facility. I was feeling emotionally fatigued as watching her decline with dementia has been difficult. I know that the time I spend with her might provide the only full conversation or emotional connection she has all day. Spending time with her is not only important, it is also a responsibility. As her conversations become an increasingly convoluted mix of reality, memories, and diluted thinking, it is harder for me to sit and listen. I stepped out of my car and saw a large dragonfly on the ground next to a puddle of dirty water. Its wings were vibrating gently, and I could see it was unable to fly. I found a stiff piece of paper in my car and gently scooped it up. I didn't touch it with my hands for fear I would cause further injury. I spoke to it as I moved it to a grassy area and laid it on a soft weed, hoping it would be able to fly at some point. I heard the words, helping souls one at a time. Somehow it didn't seem so difficult to help just one soul get the lift up that it needed. I saw Divine Mother next to me. As she symbolizes nature and the divine feminine, I knew the dragonfly was in good hands, regardless of the outcome. I thought to give the dragonfly Reiki. I envisioned it sitting in my hands as I contemplated the best way to provide the healing energy. I saw a heavenly divine light coming down, 
surrounding and emanating through the the dragonfly. Divine healing light being connected to the dragonfly's soul was the best healing it could possibly receive. Whether it lived or died was really not the important issue. Being one with the loving grace of God was the quintessential I am. Other circumstances surrounding one's physicality were secondary. My thoughts turned to my mother. Rather than my getting bogged down in the realities of her dementia, could I simply lift her up in spirit, envision her immersed in divine healing light and in a spiritual connection to her divinity? Would that not be the most desirable thing for her right now? I believe it would. Helping souls one at a time, I can do this. Thank you for listening. I would now like to tell you about Linda Dirks, our guest host for this five-week mini-series, Step Into Your Power. Linda comes to us with a career in corporate America under her belt. She spent the bulk of her career as the director of a regional chamber of commerce, worked for a counseling program, and is the director of a small college. Her decade-long journey of discovery started as a cancer patient disabled by fear and depression. After studying several alternative health modalities and wellness philosophies, she found accelerated healing and joy in the integration of science and spirituality and now helps others achieve self-empowered physical and mental wellness. Linda is a pioneer of self-wellness through the mechanics of energy, power of thought, and love. As a speaker and author, she illustrates and models the methods behind her triumph over illness, and depression. Linda's passion is teaching energy medicine workshops for people suffering from cancer and major illness, addressing stress and substance abuse, and enhancing intuition, creativity, and problem-solving skills. Linda's writing has been featured in the March edition of Guide for Spiritual Living, Science of Mind magazine. Her article titled, Growing Through Adversity, Finding the Gift in Illness, Adversity and spirituality is truly inspiring. This article and her blog, Creating Joy and Wellness, are both available on her website, spinstrawtogoldnow.com. So without further delay, it is my honor to welcome Linda Dirks. Good evening, Linda. Hi, Ruth. I so look forward to getting together with you every week. How have you been? Well, well, it's been busy, but life is good. Thank you. Well, I hope it's good. I hope it's good busy with a nice flow to it. We have a wonderful topic tonight that all of us can use and all of us relate to and all of us can, can improve on as well. So I, I hope that uh, we'll have some callers that will come in tonight. Uh, I'm going to read this uh, piece first. It's called Loving Yourself. Love and God are synonymous. Stand in love and you rise to the highest frequency and engage in your personal dance with the divine. The more you express love, the more you ignite and circulate the sacred vitality in an ever-escalating upward spiral. The practice of self-love is instant and enormous. Try it right now. Pour love down through your central core in a steady flow. With a flush of warmth and expansion, you wash away feelings of doubt, insecurity, and self-limiting thoughts. In a moment, you infuse yourself with calm and confidence. When you raise your self-esteem, you stimulate broader experience and joy in life. You become a beacon of self-footedness. Love yourself and take a big step up the ladder of your personal growth. It's a simple pivot of attitude away. When you invest in a practice, you move from being a bystander in your life to being a creator of your life. Shift from being your worst critic to being your best cheerleader, and the world says yes. Self-love is a ritual of cleansing away uncertainty and letting our, your pure nature shine. You are radiant when you radiate love. And this wonderful quote by Louise Hay, remember, You've been criticizing yourself for years, and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) What a great quote. 
we all have that is laughs. a great so quote. What I'm going to do is, is, is take each of these sentences and impa- unpack them one by one. And I'm going to open first by just this wonderful quote that I learned from J. Ruth Gendler. And the quote actually came from an eighth grader who said, if there were no mirrors, would we all think we are beautiful? And well, we away I can from tell that. you. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I, I have an eighth grader. And oh, you do? I, okay. Yep. Well, actually, she's going into ninth grade now. But, yeah, so my daughter, eighth grade, <clears throat> and the mirror is her worst enemy, which is so sad to watch. And it, I see that with all of her friends as well. So, yeah, that, that quote hits pretty close to home. I take a look at that and, and think, you know, if we weren't looking at reflections of ourselves and being judgmental, we would know that we're all beautiful in our core. And I, I don't know... I believe that it, it has to be conditioning from some, from society that, that that puts us into that into that role. But we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later as well. Uh, but from the top, I say love and God are synonymous, and I say that because it, they're they're interchangeable. There's a frequency that God comes from love, and love is an expression of God. And what's interesting is that you will catch almost the same message across all religions. So if we think of ourselves in a high frequency, then we're going to be in a higher connection with that higher power. We say stand in love and you rise to your highest frequency. When you become a high frequency, we, uh, the universe around us and the higher presence is, is an extremely high frequency. And when we raise our frequency by expressing love and being in love with ourselves and others, and just altruistic love, they become a closer match with this higher consciousness. And you're more in tune with your higher power, and you're more intuitive. And the second part of that was you engage in your personal dance with the divine. And one of the things I've said before, my guide has said to me again and again, we are one, come dance with me. And we are in that oneness when we come in, in love and in this higher frequency. But the terminology, come dance with me, it's just, it's, it's, it's a joyous interaction. You know, we, are, we are meant to be in joy and meant to interact with our divine in this way. And I just love that because I think some people uh, can be terribly somber about spirituality. And I think spirituality, you can look at spirituality as um, being just bright and enlightening and and, and, and sparkling. I know that you look at it that way a great deal, especially in your writing. Well, you, you Linda, <clears throat> are teaching me how to find the joy and the amusement <laughs> because I tend to be, I don't, I don't, I was wondering when you said the word somber, I was thinking, gosh, am I somber? And I think mine is not somber, but almost too reverent to the point that I can't find the joy. Does that make sense? I think that we're taught that a lot in our upbringing. You and I were, were you know, we're both, you know, raised in, in similar religious backgrounds uh, where somehow piety was construed as, as and, and, and reverence was construed uh, as being, you know, I use the word somber, uh, but there are many religions where there's a, a lot more joy infused, um, right? Which gets us into vitality. The next line is: the more you express love, the more you ignite and circulate this sacred vitality in an ever escalating upward spiral. And I, I love that. Energy, as we know, is cyclical. As it comes in, and you put it back out, and you, you just keep creating these cycles of energy. And as you create these cycles of energy, the energy will feed you and you'll have a higher thought. When you have a higher thought, you create a higher frequency. When you create a higher frequency, you then again have a higher thought. So it's this escalating spiral all the time. It's taking you higher and higher. And it's, it, just can, it just continues to go. Right. Can I add one more thing to that? 
Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you aren't watching yourself or being careful about what you're feeding into your mind or watching your behaviors or attitudes, you also can spiral down. So it's not, you have an option every day, every minute. Absolutely. You're going to move upwards or whether you're going to go down. Well, I'm going to, when we go through this, uh, these sentences uh, and un- unpack the meaning behind each of them, I'm going to take you through a, a really wonderful Louise Hay quote also. And, and again, jokingly, you know, I try to pack a lot into these sentences. And, and, and jokingly, I've said to you, I pack, you know, 10,000 words into three short paragraphs. Uh, but uh, they're, they're to the point, I, I do want to encourage, uh, uh, by the way, today I want to I, uh, post my blog on Thursday, and I actually, my blog piece today is on joy, and uh, joy is my compass. So we all need to take a look a little bit more of joy in our life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go into uh, the practice of self-love is instant and enormous. This is not something that we have to go out and buy and practice or perfect. And we can practice it and make it more of a, of a routine for us, but this is something that we can do instantly. It's a tool in our, in our hands, and the effect is, 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 in, is incredible. Um, I look at it like a magic that you can do yourself. You can, it can bring you instant results. In my practice, I also find, and I think people will appreciate this, I also find that it's a good uh, cure for insomnia, especially you know, in, in the evening when, when your head tends to be churning with the day's activities or what your next day is going to look like. It's great just to flush yourself with this, with this love. So we're going to try it right now. Uh, we're okay. going to take a moment, and uh, we, we'll, we'll take a minute here. I'm going to say try it right now. Pour love down through your central core in a steady flow. Sometimes people have difficulty getting jump-started. And we're going to close our eyes. Closing my eyes, yeah. Close your eyes and visualize love. If you want to uh, prime the pump a little bit, you can imagine love for someone else, love for your pet. Just bring in that attitude of love. And imagine this crystal core that we've talked about that goes down to the central channel of your body. Okay? You close your eyes and just continuously flush yourself with love. Are you ready? I'm doing it. Oh, okay. Give it a few minutes here. I almost don't want to stop. <laughs> I know. It's, it's beautiful. Can I tell you what I was doing? That's my next question. Tell me about your okay. experience. Right. So what I was doing was I thought about the heart chakra and how it's green in color. So I was bringing in green um, love as a healing to my heart chakra. And when it hit at about my – it came down my crown – um, down through the heart chakra, and then when it hit my um, solar plexus, or my third chakra, my center of self-esteem, it turned into like um, silver glitter instead of the green, and ah. so it was bringing silver glitter down. And then as it got down to my second chakra, which is the um, center for creativity, sexuality, sensuality, it turned to gold glitter on its way <laughs> out. So I got kind of a three-tone healing there. It was really very cool. You are always so visual and so vivid. It just it it amazes me. And what I what I what I really <laughs> what I really love are the similarities because the first thing that I thought of, the first thing that I felt was my heart expand. 
because it's coming down into that, that heart chakra energy, and I felt my whole heart expand. And as your heart expands, you know, all the, all the stress and everything falls away from, from you and falls away from your life. I just think it's a wonderful exercise. And it brings to mind quickly just another exercise that I was taught a long time ago um, about chakra balancing. You can use the same process of dropping love down through you and feeling it drop down through each of your chakras. And if you find it stop somewhere or slow down somewhere, there's one of your energy centers, there's one of your chakras that might need to have some, some balancing work done. So that's a great exercise for people to know about also. Crossing themselves with like love is, is, is important. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, Linda, then, one uh, thing I was go ahead. thinking, yeah, one thing I was thinking was the whole self-love thing, First of all, it's not fattening. It doesn't cost any money. It's not illegal. You don't have to take any classes to know how to do it. You can do it in the privacy of your car or your home, wherever. Nobody even needs to know that you're doing it. It's it's really one of the best gifts that you could ever give yourself. And I'm going to go back through, and I'm going to quote you on what you just said. I think you just, you just <laughs> put it incredibly. It's, it's not fattening. You don't have to run out to the store and buy it. You don't have to learn how to use it. And it's not illegal. I think that's it's great. That you can make yourself feel this good, and you can do it in an instant. And it's so easy to do. And it, and it, and it, it just says this in this next sentence. With a flush of warmth and expansion, you wash away feelings of doubt, insecurity, and self-limiting thoughts. In a moment, you infuse yourself with calm and confidence. So in your personal life, when you need to bring your, your anxiety level down a few notches, if you're having a difficult conversation when you're dealing with your children, in your professional life, if you need to pump up your confidence before you walk into a presentation or if you want to uh, create, um, create inspiration when you're doing a project. Again, this, this heart expansion, the heart is your bridge between the lower and upper chakra system. So as soon as you ignite your heart, you're going to be igniting everything and, and, you'll, and you'll just be happier and perform much better. And that's you why know, I say... Linda, you... Re- you- You said an interesting thing, because I imagined myself, I I used to be a school district administrator, and I would have to go into some pretty tough meetings with attorneys and unhappy parents, and and I would always go in and kind of put on this shield of, like, energetic armor around my chest um, when I walked in, but what, what you said I thought was so interesting, because... I prepared myself with like this strong surge of power or strength. But what that does, I think, it creates a barrier between you and whoever you're supposed to meet with. But you said to bring love in to prepare yourself for a difficult meeting. And when you bring love in, that's, I just got total body goosebumps saying that. When you bring love in, not only does it soften your heart, but it helps you to connect with that person on a heart level rather than Absolutely. going in ready for an argument or a battle. Mm-hmm. It, it softens the energy not only between two people, but you also can change the energy of, a, of, a, of an entire room. And yes. If, especially if you're in negotiations, part of my job I was a registered lobbyist for a while, and when you are in negotiations or you're you're trying to impart your point on some on someone, when you when you match hard energy with hard energy, then nothing gets absorbed. But when you come from the heart, then you, then you're matching soft energy with soft energy, and you, and 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 assimilation occurs there, and you get a lot more synchronicity going on between people. And you know, so we say when you raise your self-esteem, you stimulate broader experiences in joy and life. I don't know anyone. Uh, I think that I've done the best job about anyone I know, but I came from a really 
bad place, but I don't know anyone who doesn't self doesn't struggle somewhat with self esteem issues. And mm-hmm. I I think that if you do do nothing else but work on your self esteem and this this exercise of self love is one of the greatest ways to build self esteem because you'll find yourself becoming more sure footed all the time. And and who wouldn't want to walk in those shoes and and be absolutely confident and sure footed this at each step that they take, and you'll just you'll climb much higher. Uh, I point out when you love yourself, you take a big step up the ladder of your personal growth, and this this goes back to what I was saying about an ever escalating, ever escalating process. But the the nice thing is, it, it's it's what one of my first spiritual leaders said: it's only a pivot of attitude away. All you have to do is just and I put my hand up in the air and I go, pivot, and <laughs> I, I get <laughs> Shit, I can see it. I love it. Pivot. I can't, it's like describing to someone with a spiral staircase is you can't do it without your finger in the air, but the same thing with a pivot of attitude, it, it is just, and, it ha, and, it, and, and as you practice it, it, it becomes, it becomes uh, so much easier. And when you invest in this practice, I say you move from being a bystander in your life to being a creator in your life. We live so much of our, our lives in reaction to what's coming at us as opposed to creating what's coming at us. And when we're confident and worthy and sure-footedness, then we start to create things and we start to see a momentum of things moving in our direction or the direction of our desire as opposed to being always in a, in a reactionary mode. And I think that's really an important point to make as you move forward. And then, of course, shift from being your worst critic to being your best cheerleader, and the world says yes. When you put yourself in a position, this is very similar to what I, I uh, say before, that you know, when, when you step up to the plate and engage in a spir- spiritual practice, the universe matches you, and it it it, it just can, the, the you know the universe just continues to say yes and 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 answer you step for step. And we all know how great we feel when someone praises us. Right. This is this is something that we can do ourselves. We can praise ourselves and find ourselves in that glow. And I say, self um, love is a rich. Go ahead. A thought on that. Um, I was thinking mm-hmm. as a as a mother, um, and you know, parents. We just had Father's Day. <clears throat> as a parent, the importance of modeling for your children how oh. to love yourself and be your own cheerleader, which then frees them up to have better self talk with themselves and be more loving with themselves. That's an excellent point. And never, never having children, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. But as we were saying earlier, you know, where did this piece of looking in the mirror come from, and looking at your and being judgmental and critical of yourself, and that comes right. somewhere from society. And this is where parenting can can counteract that. That's excellent. Thank you very much. And. We say it is, and it, it it is a ritual. It's a ritual of cleansing away uncertainty and letting your pure nature shine. Again, when you're judgmental or you're engaging in negative self-talk, this is just another form of a blockage. And this is your way of just rinsing away the blockages. And what I think is really important is that when you are when when you radiate love, you yourself are radiant. We. This is absolutely the best way. If you want to glow to others and just carry an aura of love, it will shine through you. It will shine from you. And people will start to pick up on that. And you just have, you just have a, a, a natural aura about you, a glow about you when you always come from a place of love because you don't have those lower frequency thoughts passing through your, your brain all the time. And I just think, you know, writing this was really good for me because it reminded me, as we all say, to practice what we preach. Right. Right. 
<laughs> and then I and I, I I had this wonderful quote from from uh, Louise Hay. It says, "Remember, you have been you have been criticizing yourself for years, and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens." I you know Louise Hay was just so wise, and I'm going to get on with a quote from her in a bit. But let me ask you, what what some of, what are some of the practices you've had recently of loving yourself? Of, of loving myself, um, I think. I just got back from a vacation. Um, my family, very fortunate to be able to go to Nantucket, <clears throat> which is a family tradition of ours. I have no idea how it got started, but um, it is a very spiritual place for me. And every day I would wake up early before the rest of my family, and I would go up into the loft in this home, and it became my office. Nobody even came up this I think it had such a divine energy to it because um, every morning I would get up early and go sit with my guides and just listen to them and I received so much information from them over the couple of days that we were there it was amazing and I really learned talk about self-love I learned I need to keep my mouth quiet and that way, I'm open to listening. So mm. it was total self-love. And even when I went to bed at night, I would go to bed after everybody else because I would stay up writing. And it was like I had a second vacation on top of the vacation that the rest of the family had because mine started early, my days started earlier and ended later. So it was the best <laughs> gift of self-love like an ice cream sundae you just pour you just pour more on the top you're getting you're 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 getting a more mileage out of your vacation on, on both ends I did. but it brings up something that i think is, is important for all of us to remember in it is so common for us to engage in the intellectual and not take enough time and balance that with our time in the experiential or the spirit, what I call the experiential or spiritual. We are innately intellectual beings because we, we operate in a reality in a timeline that's more left brain. But if you take the time that you take or I take the time that I take and we fall back into that experiential and the spiritual, the benefits that we get that, 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 that from that experience may not be something that we're going to pick up a pen and write down immediately, but it's feeding an undertone to to our lives and to the work that we do that is that is much, much richer. I mm-hmm. I love my stuff. I'm an avid outdoors person and an avid hiker. And I several times uh during the season I go up to the up to the White Mountains and that's you know a, a real spiritual portal for me, like the loft in your in your Nantucket cottage. So uh, we need to remind ourselves of that, to take the time to be for this for the experiential and, and, the, and the spiritual. So I want to talk to you. One of the, the tools that we can use, there is a wonderful motivational clip on YouTube by Louise Hay, Tony Robbins, and Joel Austin. And you can find that on my website uh, on the top of the resources page. But what I've done, I've pulled out the quotes from Louise Hay, and I'd love to read these for you. I encourage you, as you start this work, it's great to have visual tools that you can use. I don't encourage a lot of electronic use, but this clip on YouTube, Mm -hmm. you can start by by playing it once a day. One of the things that really helped me when I was first starting this work, every morning I get uh, a, a law of attraction quote. You have these things that uh, that help keep you on track. So I'm going to read this uh, to you. It comes from uh, this clip on YouTube from uh, Louise Hay. It says, when you change your thinking, you change your life. It all boils down to choosing the thoughts you think and the foods you eat. When you can be wise in both areas, you will have perfect health because the body knows how to take care of itself. I love that. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning and last thing in the evening, Look in the mirror, say your name, say, hi, Ruth, say, hi, Linda, and say, I love you. I really, really love you. Mm. 
as you continue to do it, it will make a big difference because life loves you. It really, really loves you. But if you don't love yourself, it's very hard for life to bring you the goodies. Hmm. What, <laughs> I love her terminology. What you are thinking now, this is important, what you are thinking now is creating the way you feel in your body and your experiences tomorrow. You have the freedom to think anything you want. You are born extremely confident. You came into this world knowing how wonderful you are. So choose new thoughts to think about yourself and choose new words. Tell yourself how magnificent you are and that you deserve all the good things that life has to offer. Today is a new day. Today is the day for you to begin creating a joyous, fulfilling life. Today is the day for you to release all of your limitations. Today is the day for you to learn the secrets of life. You can change your life for the better. You already have the tools within you to do this. These tools are your thoughts and your beliefs. An affirmation opens the way. It is the beginning point of change. Every thought you think and every word you think is an affirmation. Every time you are angry, you are affirming that you want more anger in your life. Every time you feel or think like a victim, you are affirming that you want to continue to feel like a victim. Wow. If your life, yeah, that's great. If you feel that life does not give you what you want, in the world, then it is certain that you will never have the goodies that life gives to others until you change the way you think and talk. And again, you can find that on the resources page on my website, thinsdrawtogoldnow.com. And one of the things she points out here, she talks about every, every thought you think and every word you think is an affirmation. One of the things that we know is that affirmations are one of the the fastest ways to access your subconscious mind. So here we go back talking uh, what we were saying earlier about, you know, what is it about us that looks into this this mirror and judges ourselves or engages in in, negative self-talk. And a lot of that is running from our subconscious mind, which is probably, I think, 90% of what we think comes from our subconscious mind. And 90% of that was imprinted in our subconscious mind before the age of six. So this is wow. actually echoing what you're saying about how you model your children mm-hmm. because it's our subconscious mind. So these affirmations of the way we think and, and what we speak, my, uh, I, I, had, uh, you know, I had a wonderful counselor for many years who referred to it as the stinking thinking. And that's why I'm such a component <laughs> of, of counselors because they protect us from ourselves. They protect us from our own stinking thinking. Uh, but that's the, the that quote from from uh, from Louise Hay. Were there any points on that that you wanted to bring out, Ruth? Before I move on to why we're beautiful, uh, there was so much packed into <laughs> that. I, I I boy sentence by sentence, but. I loved when it was talking about how whatever you're telling yourself, that's your reality. You know, so if you're if you're angry and you're choosing to stay in anger, you're telling the universe and yourself that you want more anger. Mm-hmm. I love that. That was brilliant. What we are thinking today is what we will be tomorrow. And then we find our tomorrow was so much better, we want to think even higher and better thoughts. That's <laughs> That's these these wonderful words are great ones to to refer back to. I'm going to talk a little bit by why we are born innately beautiful. And I've said this several times before, but we are all perfect expressions of our creator. And our creator is pure love. And self-love increases our our connection with the divine. It, It increases that divine vitality in our lives, we are all a spark within the same force of God. All is beautiful. And I was thinking, you know, as, you know, June springs here and everything is blossoming and you look at 
the lilies or the irises or earlier the daffodils or the tulips, who would say one is more beautiful than the other? Or that something is or something isn't is, 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 is judgment-based. And anything that's judgment-based is a lower consciousness value. It's, it's a lower frequency. So when we find mm-hmm. ourselves judging, um, one of the things along with, with judging or being critical that I was thinking of the other day is comparing ourselves to others. And you say, well, we, 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 we look at other people. Are they, are they smarter? Are they more successful? Are, you know, if you compare yourself to someone else, we are, we're all on a, on a different path. I was told that we're all keys on the piano, and no one of them is, is, a, is, a, is a higher tone than, or, or a more perfect tone than the others. We're all just different keys on the piano doing the same thing. But it's only the, the doubts, the anxieties, the judgments, the comparisons. These are compared into us, as the, uh, programmed into us as young people. And that's what makes us doubt our innate beauty. This is going back to what you're saying about the importance of uh, being a great, a great model. So it's time for us to, to reinvent standards of, of what beauty really is. I have, a, I have one quote that I absolutely love. One of my favorite authors is J. Ruth Gendler. She wrote a book called The Book of Quality. And she wrote a lovely piece on beauty. And she ends the piece by saying, beauty is brave enough to dance with anyone who will ask her. Hmm. And I, I just think that that's another hmm. way of saying when you step up to the plate, when, you're, when, when you say, hi, beauty, I want to dance with you. And then dance, then beauty will step up to the plate. You can embrace your sense of beauty when you when you're brave enough to ask beauty. Let's let's look at each other. It's it's like looking at beauty across from you in the mirror and saying, "Yes, this is what I want." We, right. And oh. what what I was thinking of when you said that was some of the most beautiful people are the ones that physically have had more difficulties, whether it's like a disfigurement from being in a bad accident or something like that. But um, some of the folks that I'm thinking of, it's from somebody else's eyes, they might only see the physical, but when the heart kicks in and they're emanating such beauty from within because they are comfortable with themselves and love themselves, then that's all you see is beauty. I don't normally think of beauty as um, sort of a a characteristic, a a quality. You know, I guess I'm guilty too of beauty to me is normally something I can visually see. But what you're describing is beauty as, as a, What's the word I'm looking for? An adjective, a noun, a verb? It's sort of everything all wrapped up in one, but much more in-depth than I normally give thought to it. I think a real glorious beauty is a beauty that you can sense, and you can sense a beauty about someone else. You can, there's something about their energy that really grabs you. But I, I'm really glad you say that because it brings to mind um, I saw a lady in the supermarket recently, and she was decidedly overweight, but she was dressed to the nines, and she absolutely owned it. She had a plum. She had poise. She had confidence. And I walked away saying, yes, that I noticed that she was overweight, but I walked away thinking. I noticed that she was overweight, but I walked away thinking, what a gorgeous woman. It was her self-esteem. It was this it was this sense that she exuded about how she felt about herself that was the impression that she left on other people. And that's an important thing for us to remember as we fuss over what we, what we are going to wear or our dress or, you know, is it, <laughs> how is our physical presentation if we take a deeper look and, and, and look at uh, how am I exuding love? How am I exuding wholeness? How am I exuding mm-hmm. compassion? And all of these things together, you know, create a, a you know, kind of a, a, 
a deeper meaning to love. It's too bad that we uh, can be somewhat superficial in our society, but that's what this generating these conversations is all about, is, is getting, you know, beyond that superficiality. And we also all want right. to so can, first, go ahead. Can I, ask, can I ask you a question? So one of the people that I love the most in the world is my sister. And uh, she's, she's beautiful. In, in my mind, I mean, I adore her, right? So she's always beautiful to me. She has never accepted how she looks. With, I don't know why, because she's beautiful, right? Um, but she hates her body. She's, God bless her, she's 62, and she has never, ever liked, nonetheless loved, her body. And so she's got this block about letting anybody else love her because she doesn't love herself. So do you, That's have, right. do you, how do you counsel somebody? What would you say to somebody like that, that just can't get through that block? It's the same way you would talk with anyone. Can you get them to first open up the way they think about something and be open to new suggestions you take a look at how that imprint came there. Those imprints come there, again, from conditioning when we were young. Advertising. Advertising is, is you know, one of the worst reinforcements of that. Advertising teaches us um, that we smell, that our hair is dank, that we're overweight, that we have to have this or that in order to be as happy as our neighbors. But if you, if you look at thinness, Thinness has only been in vogue for the last, say, 50 years. Aphrodite, she was she was the you know epitome of feminine beauty, and she was portrayed as very full figured. You look at Marilyn Monroe; she was a mm-hmm. you know great sex symbol back when in the 60s, and she wore a size 14. You know they 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 were not thin people. It's only this this attitude about thinness is is really is really something new there is a new movement going on called body positive and if you google body positive there's a lot of information about that and it's great to see this this upsurge coming in our society and and, and putting more positivity on on a uh, more positive spin on our on our on our physical appearance the the dieting industry is like a seventy billion dollar dollar industry. Mm-hmm. But if you take a look at yourself, if you care for yourself with healthy habits of self love and empowerment, then you're beautiful. You know, if you have a, a healthy diet of whole foods, you don't use food as a reward or an escape or an addiction. Um, you're going to be a healthy person. Being healthy is a lot more important than being thin. Also. The exercise is important. It, it promotes that energetic flow in your body. All the uh, electric, you know, the energetic circuitry in your body, your meridians and so forth. That energy runs through your body, through your connective tissue. So exercise is very important. But you know, beauty comes down to you know your attitude about yourself and how can you change that attitude in other people. Well, this body positive movement is working on that. But mm-hmm. I, I think it's important that we also. As I say, we, we you know we look at our wholeness, not our our, our thinness, and our our wholeness goes back to, again to more of our personal qualities. And we we talked about that in our first couple of programs about knowing yourself and embracing our gifts. And one of the the images that my guide sent me that I that I really loved is that in that core that we were talking about earlier. It was shown to me as being this radiant pillar of light, almost like a, a cloudy quartz crystal that had this all this movement within it of flavor and color and all this different beingness that creates what is what is uniquely what is uniquely you. If you if you know what your key skills are, you can expand on those. Expansiveness in your life, as we say, brings more and more back to you. Part of the self-love, too, is being proud of our positive qualities. 
we can we can be so self-effacing and so uh, literally mean to ourselves. You know, so, it, someone pointed out to me if you said to your friends some of the things that you say to yourself, <laughs> would they still be your friend? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we have to think about that. But I think what's really important is to look at where you are and be content with where you are, but you can always whisper more. You can always be curious. You can always explore. You can always, you know, nurture new talents. And it's just so important to to express, you know, don't keep your light under a bushel. I know that I spent a great deal of my life engaging in what they now call, you know, fear of being, you know, fear of outshining. You didn't, you didn't want to call attention to yourself. We're taught to fit in and, you know, not to, to leave your light under a bushel. And once you express these things, you connect them together and then, and then your life's purpose becomes more evident and you, and you take off. That's pretty tricky, though, Linda, because you were an athlete. Well, you are an athlete. And you were a competitive athlete. So how do you stay small not draw attention to yourself and excel as an athlete. How often do we do something great and somebody compliments us and we go, "Ah, oh, shucks, that was nothing." And right, that's how right. we and that's how we balance it out. Yes, I I I was and and am still somewhat of an athlete, so body image was a huge part of being an athlete and you know, on the radio here, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll outwardly say it. When I had breast cancer and had to have a mastectomy, it was devastating. But now, it's, mm-hmm. you know, 15 years later, I don't really even think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. There are some aspects of being a competitive athlete also that contribute to self-esteem issues because you start to wrap your self-worth around how fast am I, how, you know, where did I place in the field as opposed to, you know, what are my greatest qualities? So you have to be aware of that, that in, no matter what you do, that you're, that you're nurturing what's great inside of you uh, rather than uh, putting your self-esteem on external, external forces. Oh, we could talk about a little bit about how you create self-love. You know, we talk about your inter, inner dialogue and your self-talk. One of the things that I was taught that if you practice a thought, it becomes an attitude. If you practice an attitude, it becomes a belief. And if you can create a belief, you can uncreate a belief. That might hmm. be a good, wow. a good uh, thought to share with your sister. That, right. You know, you right. you in your own mind somewhere created this belief, and if you want to, you can uncreate this belief. That might be helpful. But I wouldn't be preachy about hmm. it, obviously. <laughs> right. Right. One right. Of the things, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that uh, I find really important. They can come up with a thousand ways that you can change a negative thought, but I think the one panacea is not to concentrate on moving something out, but moving something new in. Once you move something new mm-hmm. in, then, then, then what you need to move out will, will just go away. It's like that neural pathway that, that falls away out of disuse. And uh, you, you, just, you just start to think in a different, in a different way. Uh, say the, 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 the stinking thinking. And when you when you stop fixing all the flaws about yourself, say, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to fix my hair. I'm going to um, change my clothes, or or I'm going to lose weight." That flow of energy that we talked about earlier, that flow of receiving, you're putting you're putting up your hand and saying no. As soon as you say no to something, then you're stopping that flow of receiving into your life. So just say yes and keep that receiving coming in. And one of the things that I thought was really clever, this isn't original, but I picked this up. Take your, when you're having a really low moment, pick up your phone and set it on selfie and have a love oh. chat with yourself. Look at, 
this would be great for your kids because they're probably carrying their phones all the time. Pick up your all phone. All the time, yeah. Okay, uh, they're more, I, I'm not very phone-centered. But you can actually put yourself, your phone on selfie and, and, and have a chat and, and encourage yourself and, and be your own cheerleader that way. I'm a, I'm a great one for placing reminders on my bathroom mirror, on the, on the refrigerator, um, on the rearview mirror in my car. And looking around, especially sometimes when I when I read uh, something that I want to imprint on myself, I'll reinforce it in different places around my life, around my house. Uh, affirmations, great affirmation. I am I am whole, perfect, and complete. Just that I am whole, perfect, and complete, just as I am. And when you settle into that soft, quiet core, it just you just come from a place from I'm okay. I'm okay, just just as I am, and I think those are That's, are yeah. great things to remember. Those are beautiful, and we we do have we've got like three minutes left. But you reminded okay. me of one of the most difficult periods, well, the most difficult period in my life. I was thirty and divorcing my husband, and I was devastated. And the best I could do, if I was awake was cry. I mean, and I, I just, I cried for like three months solid and I would wake up in the morning and cry. And I, anytime I wasn't teaching, I was sobbing and I would look in the mirror and just talk to me. And I think it was like the first time in my life I'd ever really looked at myself and somehow that was very healing to me. So I, I appreciate that as something that you're recommending that people do. It's hard to look at yourself in the mirror. At least it is for me. I think so too. But I, um, I don't know how to describe what it was like a few years ago when I finally, after coming out of my dark ages, finally stepped back into my own power, and I can look at myself in the mirror now, and I, and I, I, you know, I see the wrinkles, and I, I, I see the age spots. And I, I look around, but I'm still pretty darn happy. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, would you yeah. like me to wrap up? Hey, with so a couple Linda, of I, I I need to wrap up here. Um, okay. I want to thank you because this has been absolutely beautiful. Um, we did get a Facebook Live comment that I wanted to share, and okay. um, it says International Angels Network has totally helped me to tune into a true and better me. I wish this precious gift for all. So that's beautiful. Oh. And um, isn't that sweet? That came in while you were talking, my dear. So please okay. take that and own that one. Um, so I'll just, just mention remind... you that uh, oh. next week we will, we'll, we'll be talking about walking with spirit, which will add more volume to what we've been talking about. Well, great. Great. I'm looking forward to that. I want to remind you all to share the broadcast and like to your like-minded friends and family. And we are available on Google Play. So thank you for listening in. Linda, love you. Thanks for being with us tonight. It's always a pleasure to have all of you with us. It is truly an honor to be among the hosts of International Angels Network. And I look forward to walking with Spirit and you all next Thursday, June 28, 2018. God bless. Love you. Good night, Ruth.